Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on your Sony mirrorless camera. We're gonna start off with an overview of the features of the microphone itself. We're gonna see some recommended settings that I use for recording video, and we're also gonna see how to set up your Sony mirrorless camera to take advantage of this microphone. Let's go. Let's start off by looking at the microphone itself. This is the power button, just press this in to turn the microphone on and off and the LED will light up here if it's on. This button will enable the built-in high pass filter. This basically will cut out some of the lower frequencies. You can set this to 75 Hz or 150 Hz. Basically what this means is that it will cut out frequencies below 75 or 150 Hz. This can help reduce the noise of that low frequency background rumble, for example from traffic or air conditioning. This button allows you to choose what output gain to use. This is basically how much or how little the microphone amplifies the signal before sending it into the mic input on the camera itself. You can specify minus 10 dB. This will reduce the signal going into the camera. You can set this to plus 20 dB, which will amplify the signal going into the camera. If both of these LEDs are unlit, that means that the signal is not going to be boosted or reduced before passing it into the camera. This LED down here tells you whether or not the high frequency boost is enabled. Basically, this will boost high frequencies above 7 kHz by 5 dB. This can be used to enhance clarity and detail. This is especially useful if you're using the additional Rode Deadcat windshield. To enable the high frequency boost, press the high pass filter and output gain control buttons together. And when this LED is lit, the high frequency boost is enabled. And when it's not lit, the high frequency boost is disabled. One super useful feature of this microphone is the fact that it can record a safety channel. Basically, if you enable this feature, it will lower the output of the right channel of the dual mono signal by 10 decibels. Basically, this means that when you import the video into your editor, you'll get a stereo audio signal. The left side will be at the normal level, but the right hand side will be down by 10 dB. This basically means that if you accidentally clip the signal and overload the microphone, you might have a chance to recover this with the right channel of the stereo audio. If you want to enable the safety channel feature, press the output gain control and power button together. Another super useful feature of the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus is that it will automatically turn on and off when your camera turns on and off. This can help prevent you from accidentally turning on the microphone and not recording audio when you're recording a video. For this to work, the 3.5mm microphone input on the camera has to support plug-in power. You can disable this feature if you want by pressing the power and high pass frequency buttons together. For power, the VideoMic Pro Plus takes either a regular AA battery or the supplied LB1 rechargeable battery. You can recharge the LB1 rechargeable battery by simply plugging in the USB cable. You know the battery's charging when you get a slow flashing blue light. When this turns to a fast flashing blue light, you've got about 75% charged. And when it turns solid blue, you've got 100% charge. When you're using the mic, if you've got a solid red light, that means you've got about 10 hours charge remaining. If you get a slow flashing red light, you've got about two hours of charge remaining. And if you get a flashing red light you've only got about 30 minutes charge remaining. To connect the microphone to your camera you've got this 3.5 millimeter threaded TRS output socket. Basically this means that if you've got a cable that supports it you can screw the cable into the microphone to stop it from accidentally falling out. As a quick tip here when you connect the mic cable make sure you plug it in firmly so that you can hear a little click. And always make sure you do a quick test recording before you record anything important. Out of the box, the microphone comes with this foam windshield, but if you're gonna be working in more windy conditions, you might wanna think about purchasing the additional Rode Deadcat windshield. This can offer a bit more wind noise protection. The microphone itself uses this Rycote mount, and this is basically to help reduce some of the shakes or the noises that could be transferred from the camera body through to the microphone itself. So it's basically like a little suspension mount that the microphone itself sits on top. So that's a quick overview of the features of the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. Let's take a look next at what settings to use. So I personally don't make use of the high pass filter. I've got this turned off as you can see here. I prefer to do any kind of EQ adjustments in post rather than in microphone. But if you want more of a run and gun approach, you can certainly turn on this feature. When it comes to the output gain control, I set this at plus 20. Basically, I wanna make sure that the microphone does most of the work of the amplification of the signal because it's likely that the microphone has better amplification technology built into it than in the camera itself. I also don't make use of the high frequency boost feature. Once again, I prefer to do EQ adjustments in post. 
One feature I definitely make use of is the safety track feature. I have this turned on all the time. This has saved me a couple of times when one of the channels has clipped, but I've managed to use the safety track, which records a quieter signal, and use that instead of the left-hand side of the stereo signal. So these are the settings I use on the microphone. Let's take a look next at how we can actually set up the camera to make best use of these settings. Once you've got the camera correctly connected to the microphone, depending on what Sony camera you're setting up, you might have slightly different menus. Basically, you want to find the movie settings and find where the audio recording settings are. In the A7R4 here, this is in the Movie 2 menu or page 2 of 11. Head into the Audio Rec Level Menu option, open that up, and basically what you want to do here is set the audio record level so that when you're recording audio, these green bars here peak at about minus 12 or a little bit above. Remember that we've set plus 20 gain in the output signal from the Video Mic Pro Plus, so we need to reduce the input level in the camera itself. To do this, we're just going to reduce this input level gradually until the green bars are hitting just above minus 12. Depending on what Sony camera you're using, you might find that a setting of one still produces too high an audio signal. If this is the case, you might want to turn off the plus 20 dB gain and try either zero gain, and if that's still too hot, try minus 10. So the settings I'm using in this video should make a really good starting point. You will, however, have to tweak these a little bit depending on how close you are to the microphone or depending on what environment you're recording the video in. As always, do a test recording before you record anything important. If you want to learn more about the safety track feature and how to use it while you're editing your videos, I've got a dedicated video for this. I'll leave a link in the description. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please click the like button. That really helps the channel and leave a comment below. And feel free to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. See ya. Thank you.